let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we just, I pray that you'd give me the words and I pray, Lord, that your will would be done in our midst. That we would know, we would hear your voice, that we would know your will and that we would walk in your will. And that which you want to do in our midst. Lord, your word says in James 1, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But we must ask in faith without doubting, for he who doubts receives nothing from God. Strengthen our hearts, Lord. We pray for wisdom. We pray, Lord, that, that we would capture the vision that you have for this church, for each of our lives for where we live, for the people around us. That we would see the good news, the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ spread out amongst us and that many be swept into the kingdom at this time. In Jesus' name I pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. You okay, Jackie? Yeah. There's just two guys hanging around out there. Probably from the footballers. Okay. Like Alright. I did witness to some uh, Hindus yesterday. <clears throat> so. So. On Saturdays, we want to start going out. We want to do some witnessing. One of the things that I feel that we need to be doing is offering to pray for people. And just sharing the good news. We have an incredible product to give away, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the victory that he won for us on the cross, which is why we gather together and we sing and we worship the Lord, because he's won the victory. We have the victory. When Jesus died on the cross, he paid the price for our sins and he won healing for our bodies. He took away all the need for us to suffer anxiety and depression and discouragement and sickness and eternal death. So Jesus did an amazing thing on the cross that anyone who believes in the Lord will be saved. And we've believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and we have been saved. That when we accepted Jesus into our hearts, he came to live and he filled us with his Holy Spirit. And it is an amazing thing. You know, I walk around and there's so many people. I was walking in the park yesterday. And you just don't know who's walking past you. There was one man walking past, and I spoke to him. But he couldn't hear me because he had earphones in, but then I spoke and he took them out and he looked a bit scared. And, you know, he was, from, he was somebody from another... And I know, it's difficult when I go witnessing. Honestly, it's, it is interesting because it's like Monika when everyone was like, oh, friendly. If I go, me and Paul were going together, and Pab, it's like, you know... We stopped them. It's like that. Excuse me, just, just what I share. So honestly, I've done this. I've, I've, I used to go witnessing old traffic with a friend of mine who's bigger than me. And people would just be like that as we walk up to them. You could all see them reaching for their wallet to, like, take it, just take it. You know? And it's like, no, we want to tell you. We stop. Just stop. We're telling you Jesus loves you. You know? And anyway, this guy just looked a bit scared. I gave him an invite. And... You know, I just told him that Jesus loved him. And he's obviously somebody from another culture, very different culture. He's somebody that would be welcomed, I think, into the Church of England at this time. You know, and that's okay. It doesn't matter. Every person that we meet has a precious soul that needs to be saved. And I'm not bothered anymore. There was a Hindu family walking along, and I knew they were Hindus. And I just thought, it doesn't matter. Everyone has a precious soul. It's, they're not too difficult. For the Lord Jesus to save. And we don't know. And he said to me, of course we believe in Jesus. We believe in all the gods. And, you know, we had a bit of a chat. And I gave him some literature and invited him to church. And um, <clears throat> you just don't know. You just don't know what's going on in somebody's life as you walk past them. Sometimes people look very together. And inside they are dying. They are one millimeter away from just packing the whole thing in. People have been brutalized and abused and let down and they're struggling in all different kinds of ways. And our product is, what we're offering is life. We're, we're giving them the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And it's an amazing thing. And I don't think we have to be great evangelists, because I'm not a great evangelist. I, I'm not, I'm kind of, I just do my own thing, you know. And I know that some people, Jackie's sister is a great evangelist. She can just strike up a really great conversation with anyone and then just witness to them. And it's so natural and it's so, it's, I listen, I'm watching it, it's like, wow, that's so great. Um, because she's gifted as an evangelist and, and others are not so gifted and it doesn't matter because the word itself is anointed. And as we go out, we're offering life to people and you don't, you never know what's going to happen. I remember Rebecca Brown telling a story about a woman in Los Angeles who was a heroin addict, prostitute, and somebody gave her a tract on the street. She just put it in a handbag. And that night, when she got to her flat, she read the tract and gave her life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And the power, the presence of God fell upon her. And all night long, she was being delivered from demons. By the morning, she was set free completely. She was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she was entirely delivered from heroin. And even all the marks on her arms from the needles were, were healed. It was the most incredible transformation. That happened simply because somebody gave her a tract. Now I've got loads of material. So we're going to go out next Saturday. And we're going to share the good news. Um, I expect it to be, to be a success. I expect it to be good. Because God can't use us if we're not doing anything. But the Holy Spirit can use what we bring to him. And you may want to bring a whole HGV full of good food for the people and feed them. And that's wonderful. But if you just have a, a, a sandwich, some bread and fish, God can use that and multiply it and everyone can be fed. There is, a, there is a belief, I said it last week, there's a belief that, you know, people don't want the gospel today. We say it in church sometimes, people don't want the gospel today. They've got entertainment, they've got humanism, they've got all the, the occultic things rising up. And Manchester's too hard, the people are too bitter, the people are just dead. They don't want the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's not true. Jesus is bigger than that. He has more power than that. And I see that this city can be transformed for Christ. There's a lot of darkness in this city. But the light is always bigger than the darkness. And I tell you, as a pastor, I'm not bothered about what comes our way. We're going to go out, we're going to love the people. We're going to, we're going to share the love of Christ. You know, I tell you, I'll tell you the truth. I can't, you can't judge, so I don't know for sure. But I think one of the guys I spoke to was, um, was, a, was, was gay yesterday, and very much so. And, you know, I just felt that, that this is someone that Jesus loves. Jesus loved this man. He loves this man. He wants good things. I don't know anything. I didn't know anything about him. But he took the, he took the information I gave him. And he, he took the invite to church. And, you know, one of these days, he may come just to inquire, just to see what's going on. And we don't know, but we're going to love these people. We're going to share the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ with them. There's a lot of foolishness going on. In the, in the country at the moment, in the church, unfortunately. And, you know, i just got to say this. Justin Welby is not fit to be a leader in the body of Christ. And I, I pray and wish for the opportunity one day to, to be able to talk to him. God bless him. He's lost, his, he's lost the way. He is a weak man. And he's very intelligent and he's very well read and he's, he's a great speaker. But he's a weak person and he's someone who's compromised. His stance is not a loving stance. His stance of appeasement. His stance is saying that people who are lost in, in sin can come into church and have that blessed. That is not loving anybody. If the Bible is true, then people in that lifestyle who choose an adulterous lifestyle, a sexually immoral lifestyle, will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You can't. You have to do things God's way. The things of God only work when we do them his way. And the word of God is true. And Jesus is not a liar. Now, if that's correct, then those people are in peril. They are in peril. And to appease them and to say that they can be welcomed into church, 
that their sexual union can be blessed. It's something that God is pleased with. It's just the most wicked thing that you can do. It's not loving. It's not loving them. The day will come when each one of us will stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give account. It's loving to, to love people. We love people. We don't judge. We don't look down our nose on anyone. Of course not. It's just ridiculous. We are, we, are, we are in ourselves, every one of us, me, we are filth. We're nothing. We brought nothing to the table. We have added nothing to our righteousness. Our only claim to holiness is the Lord Jesus Christ. All of us are the same. We're all in the same boat. You may be the worst pedophile. You may be Adolf Hitler. You may be a murderer, whatever. Or you may be someone who thinks they're decent. You know, I spoke to somebody this week and they, they told me that they were a decent person. They're a good person. They're not a believer. I didn't know what to say. I didn't want to say, you're not, you're not, you're not decent, you're filth. I didn't want to say that. You know, it's, it's the wrong approach. But... I mean, the truth is, I, when she was talking, I thought, well, I'm filth. That's what I am. There's no goodness in me. What? There's nothing. It's ridiculous. We're sinners saved by grace. Our only claim to fame is the Lord Jesus Christ. Our only claim to heaven is the sacrifice of Jesus. The only thing that we did was to accept him as our Lord and Savior. That's all. And anyone who thinks that, we're, that they've become something, God have mercy on us. That the presence of the Lord comes and we know that he is God. He is worthy. He is holy. He will be worshipped for all, for all eternity. He is the king. It's his kingdom. And we have been allowed to come into that kingdom. Amen. Not only allowed, but we've been adopted as sons and daughters. How amazing is that? How incredible is that? So this stance of appeasement is, is not loving. It's, there's no love in it whatsoever. It's disgusting. I'm not, obviously to be homophobic is also preposterous. It's not, not for the Christian, of course not. To look down our nose on anyone is ridiculous. But we have to tell the truth that God is the God who loves us, who can restore us, who can forgive us for our sin, give us a new identity. We become a new person in Christ. Yes, we leave our sins at the cross. Yes, we come into agreement with him. But that's not something we're leading with. I just told this man, said to you know, I just want to tell you that Jesus loves you. And I just knew it was true. I hope he, I hope he, in my mind later, when I prayed for him, I, I saw him going home and part of me thought he's just thrown it in the bin, you know, glad he's got, escaped from me. And the other thing is that he's gone home and he's read the good news of the gospel. But we'll see. Because we're going to have people coming into church who aren't Christians we're going to have people coming in. I was in Iceland last night shopping, as I do. <laughs> right, it's like 8 o'clock at night. And a man walked in, looked a little bit like um, a bricklayer. Okay? And he had a big dress on and splodge of lipstick. And, you know, he had a wig and all kinds of things. And he, he went up to the counter and he went, um, Excuse me, love, have you got any of that, uh, you know? And I thought, wow. But we're going to have people coming into church who are dressed like this. We're not going to look down on them. <laughs> They're just like us. They're just the same. They're in need of a savior. But they're in need of being loved and restored. The truth sets us free. What are we going to do when we see people coming into church like that? Do you know, I'll tell you the truth. In, in Times Square Church in, in New York, drag queens would come in to disrupt the service. The drag queens with the high heels, they look massive, they're huge, fully made up, so intimidating and scary. Incre I don't know how long it takes to do all that. I tell you, I could never become a drag queen, honestly. Just can't, just can't be bothered with all that, all that, putting all that makeup on and everything. Anyway, but that's not the only reason. That's not the only reason. There's more reasons than that why I'm not going to do that. But <clears throat> God bless them. It must take them hours. You know, and they would come into the church and they'd strut up and down the aisles saying things and swearing or whatever. And, the, and David Wilkerson would preach the gospel, a gospel of truth, a gospel of love. And the presence of the Lord would come and he would say there were services where those, those, men, those men would be weeping on their knees by the end as the presence of the Lord came. God doesn't come to, 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 to smash us or, or to judge us or to... 
to kill us. He comes to save us. Jesus came to save us. I'm getting to the, I'm getting to the sermon in a minute, okay? This is still, this is still the notices, all right? How I do them, okay? <clears throat> I mean, the good news is we're not going to be bothered if they come... If they, if they hear what we're about and what I'm saying now, and then the police come and they sit down and they listen, and then they arrest me because I've said something that is deemed to be against the thought police or the you know, homophobic or whatever, I don't believe I have been. But if they, if they choose to say that I have and they take me away to be questioned or whatever, and they say we can't use this building anymore, and they confiscate our equipment, do you know that's not going to bother me in any way? at all because I believe that you know I believe these times are going to come but we're going to be we're going to be a people who trust in the Lord that he is our provider that the Lord would open up a space even if we just meet together outside if we don't have a building but I believe the Lord will provide for us and I believe that many will be saved I do believe it's the Lord's will that this church and the message that we have is expanded, that people come into the church. So I've written down here, <clears throat> prepare for growth before it happens. Okay, I'm going to say these words now. Malachi 1 verse 8. When you give blind animals as sacrifices, isn't that wrong? And isn't it wrong to offer animals that are crippled and diseased. Try giving gifts like that to your governor and see how pleased he is, says the Lord of Heaven's armies. What kind of sacrifice do we bring to the Lord? How do we live our Christian lives? Do we give the Lord the best? Or do we give him that which really doesn't matter? Do we throw the coppers, the change, out of our pockets to the Lord? Here you go. Have that. Praise the Lord. Or do we give him the best? Do we give him a tithe when we get our wage? We give him a tithe off the top? Or do we throw what's ever left at the end of the month? Or when someone says, it's the offering, we just think, oh my goodness, I'm not prepared, but just 20 quid, no, 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 five pound. Or, you know, I'm not, I'm not having a go at anyone, at anyone now. I know people pay online and everything else, and that's wonderful. It's not really about money. John Wimber used to say, commitment is spelt M-O-N-E-Y. It's very interesting. I find for myself to observe what's going on in my own life. But what offering are we bringing to the Lord? Are we achieving excellence in our personal lives, in our homes, and in our church? When we come to church, do we come to bring excellence? You know, something, something that will hinder the Lord from bringing people into the church is our behaviours and our attitudes and our level of commitment. I was going to say about, talk about timekeeping, but you just all just beat me to it today because it, it was amazing that we started the service on time. But you know, if you've got people coming in who are, who are depressed, who are self-harming, who are using drugs, who are getting abused in abusive relationships, people who are getting lost in pornography, who are getting lost in, in, in sexual immorality. They're separating from their families. They're losing their way. They're under pressure. We have people coming into the church like this. We can't be half-hearted in what we're doing. We can't amble into church having not prepared for the service. We need to be up early Sunday morning praying. We need to have a lifestyle of praying in tongues. We need to be a people who are prepared to finance the church. You know, we need workers. We need people. And when the church wakes up and thinks, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live for Christ and I'm going to serve the church as though it was mine, as though it's my business, you know, then the Lord will see that and he'll, he will entrust people to us. I had a, I had a vicar friend, it's great, great guy, he's old now. 
Church of England vicar. By the way, I love the Church of England, many great Church of England churches. And I believe, you know, the phoenix will rise out of the ashes. A new church probably is going to emerge. And God bless it. God bless all those African ministers and all the others who are standing on the word of God. But <clears throat> this friend of mine was fasting and praying. And he was a really godly man. And they did a mission and they went out into the, to, to the parish and preached the gospel and everything else. And not one person became a Christian. And he was really distraught and he got on his knees and he was fasting and praying. And the Lord spoke to him and said, I'll give you more people when you learn to take care of the ones you already have. And it was kind of, it, was, it really struck me at the time. And I thought, gosh... Why would the Lord bring people into the church, into the kingdom, when those around us, not just the past, not just me, but us, we're not, we're not even looking after ourselves and each other. The morning prayer meetings are going so well, 7 o'clock every day, Monday to Friday. And the Tuesday evening prayer meeting is amazing. I just want to say, how much of a priority is that in your life, to attend that meeting? How much of a priority is it to get to church? You see, I'll tell you the truth. If I've got six drag queens coming in, coming to disrupt the meeting and coming to get us arrested and coming out, I'm not, I'm not going to be bothered about that. I'm going to love them. I'm going to have a laugh with them. I'm going to tell them that Jesus loves them. Okay? And I need people to be here on time. I need you guys to prepare. I need a clean building. So I was here at quarter to eight this morning, hoovered the entire building, out, right out there me and Jackie, Don and Wallen Rachel were here at 9.30 and Monika came Monika was, do you clean the toilets today? kitchen, you clean the kitchen you know these are, these are good these are jobs that need to be done if I've got people like that Hindu family coming in just to find out about yet another God if I find them coming in I want them to come into a clean building where if they go to the toilet it's not it's not awful i mean the building's not the greatest and we are going to have a work day where we're going to use our carpet cleaner <coughs> have i mentioned that yeah. yeah and we're going to clean the carpet with our new carpet cleaner and maybe paint some walls and do some things i i don't want to do that on my own i don't want to be me and you know marrick or whatever it's got to be a collective job we've got to rise up to do that i need us to be praying in tongues before the service on a sunday but the trouble is, I know some people work. I know some people work. And I know it's the job, it's the only job they can get. They can't get a better job at this time. And God knows that. And God's, God's, it's okay. It's good. But there are others. I'll just tell it, tell you the truth. There's probably people in our church who should be doing other jobs and prioritizing the fact that they build their life around that service. I mean, being a Christian is not about coming to church. That's a small part of it. It's just part of it. But it is important. The collective worship is important. So we build our life around coming to church. So I feel the challenge that Manchester City have in the Champions League. I mean, this doesn't apply to anyone who supports Man United. But Manchester City are in the Champions League. And we sometimes play on a Tuesday night. So I can't, I, I, I have a choice. I mean, it's a serious thing. Do I watch the football or do I come to the prayer meeting? I think though the Tuesday night prayer meeting is amazing. I think it is really incredible. We meet for only for one hour. Each morning at 7 o'clock we meet for half an hour. And I think this is really powerful. I think it's really incredible. But how much of a priority in our life is that prayer meeting? So God's looking and he's thinking, how can I entrust that woman who's self-harming or that person whose job is threatened and they don't know the world is collapsing, how can I entrust them to that church and those people if they can't even get together to pray properly? Do you see what I mean? Colossians 3.23 Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. This is our kingdom. It's our kingdom. We are the kings and the lords. Jesus is the king of kings and the lord of lords. We're the, we're the kings in training. We're kings in training. And it's time we woke up. 
to the fact that it's our kingdom. We're going to inherit the kingdom. Of course, Jesus will always be the king. It will be his kingdom. But we're going to be a part of that because we're family. We're sons and daughters of the living God. So we need to invest and work for our kingdom as though it's, it's ours. It's some, something that's amazing. It's not just coming to church. It's not just, you know, it's more than that. Two Corinthians eight verse seven, but as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all e earnestness, and in love for you, see that you excel in this act of grace also. So we're called to excel. We're called to achieve a high standard. Now I'm not saying if you feel that you try to do that and then fail, you get discouraged and you fall away. Of course not. But. <clears throat> You know, those of us who have the gift of tongues, how much are we using that gift? Because this gift is the gift that will build us up. It will lead us into the word of God. It will usher in the presence of the Lord in our lives. How much of a priority is it to pray in tongues? Praying in tongues is something that the churches don't even preach about anymore. They don't even talk about. Even the Pentecostal churches don't talk about it very much. It's a forgotten thing, but it is the most transforming and incredible gift. It's open to everybody. I preached on it last week. How many people have spent time this week seeking after that gift who haven't got it? It was available. Last week, Jackie spoke in tongues. It's available now. You can come forward at the end of this service and we'll pray for you. Receive the gift and then go home and use it. Prioritize it. Use it over looking at YouTube. Use it over looking, watching films. Use it over endless discussions or phone calls or whatever it is in your life. Use the gift. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. But I tell you, I don't want to just do church. I don't want to be here in 10 years just doing the same things. I don't want to be singing, you know, our God. That song is great. I don't want to be singing that in 10 years. I want to be singing the songs that the new people who come in will write out of their walk with the Lord and will be singing them. I believe new people are going to come into the church and they're going to displace those of us who've been here a long time. Maybe even me, I don't know. They will come in, the Lord will appoint them into positions. Let me tell you something else about God's kingdom. It's not about personal ambition, but we need to strive Paul said, eagerly desire spiritual gifts. We need to desire to be in positions of influence in the body of Christ. Whether that's one, influencing one person by just getting alongside them in life and looking after them, looking, loving them, giving them some, some support. Whether you become a small group leader. Whether you become an assistant pastor, a pastor. Whether you realize as we go out that you have an evangelistic gift. That when you talk to people, they listen and you can engage them without offending them. And you just have more success than others. You know, you have an evangelistic gift. And you need to develop that and you need to press into what God is doing. I was making a point and I've completely forgotten what it is. Oh my goodness me. Never mind. So, I'll just keep talking and it'll come back to me, I think. <laughs> Jesus, help me. That's what I needed. Yeah. Fanta. Ah, oh, it's gone, I don't know. It'll come back in a second. So guys, listen. What we're doing is really serious. Soon, our lives will be over. There are things happening in the world. I don't really want to get into that. But there are things happening in the world at the moment that I believe are occurring just before the return of Christ. I got a feeling that many of us won't have funerals. That we will, we will see the Lord returning. And then the show's over. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to say to the Lord about how we used our money, our time, 
our energies, what was the focus of our life. What are we going to say to him at that time? I'm not saying that we should become supermen and superwomen of faith now, but we need to spend time with the Lord, pursue him. We need to, 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 to go through our lives and, and examine our lives and what we're doing. That's what I was going to say about promotion in God's kingdom. Derek Prince felt the Lord say to him one day that the only legitimate means of promotion is in God's kingdom is service. When, we, when the Lord gives us a job and we serve in that particular task and we're faithful, then the Lord can promote us. That's legitimate promotion. There is illegitimate promotion where people go a different way and they climb through the window instead of going through the door. And we see the evidence of that in the church today. But legitimate promotion in God's kingdom comes through service. So you're called to serve. It may not be glamorous. Often it's not glamorous. Often you're called to serve in what belongs to somebody else. So before, this, before I became a pastor, I served another pastor in Droylston for a couple of years. I was a worship leader. I was general opening the building, putting the chairs out guy, going to meetings, supporting him. I got into like a leadership group. And then we left that church closed. We went to Vine Life and I served my pastor there for seven years. I was a trustee. I was on the worship team. I led small groups. Um, I did all kinds of activities. We, we headed up the intercession. It was serving. And I knew, I knew all the time I was there that the Lord had called me to preach. And I was never allowed to preach. We even went on missions with, with other churches, with another organization. And I preached to, to big, or big churches in Nigeria. It was amazing. I went home. They didn't let me preach. What do, what do you want? And I, I knew I just had to serve. Putting chairs out serving people Amen. and there were times when I, I knew that the leadership were wrong in what they were doing but I had to bite my lip say what I had to say but I had to serve and I even got a job in the Salvation Army where I preached five times a week so I knew the Lord had gifted me but what was what was required of me was to serve where I was and I had to do that for seven years before the Lord released us and we were then called into this ministry and started it so there are tasks that need to be done in church. I'm still opening the building 10 years on. I still open the building. I don't know why I'm doing that. It's crazy. You know, I was here early, putting the heating on, hoovering up. Then we were putting chairs out, moving equipment around. I'm still worship leader. I'm, you know, I don't, I don't think I should be doing that. I shouldn't be doing that. But if other people aren't stepping up into these roles then I get bogged down doing these particular tasks. And it thwarts the life and the growth of the church. I believe we should have an assistant pastor. We should have other leaders. We appointed deacons. They've got to step up. You've got to step up. If you're waiting for me to come and say to you, here's a list of jobs I want you to do, only to be told, well, I'm busy and I can't do that and I'm not sure about that. And I, you know, you know it's, I need people coming to me. Deborah's come to me, eight months pregnant. I'll open the building up at eight in the morning, put the heating on the hoover up. So I can't do that. <laughs> we'll come, we'll, we'll turn up here at 9.30 and she's given birth on the carpet, you know. I know we've got a carpet cleaner and everything, but... <laughs> what, you say you've got a carpet cleaner? <laughs> you buy one, you get one free. It's for the church, yeah. So... Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Next Saturday afternoon, what time do you want to meet? If anyone can meet. I'll just put, the, I'll put it out on the WhatsApp. Okay? We're going out. I've got loads of material. I've got fantastic material from Living Waters. Amen. Lovely little tracks just telling people about God's love. Um, you know, we're not going to be beating anyone up. We're, not, we're just going to go out. We're going to smile. And we're going to be nice. And we're just going to be lovely with them. After lunch. Okay. All right. And um, at the end of it, you know, we'll. I don't. What should we do at the end of it? Have something to eat or whatever. Good. Yeah. We'll do. Some. Okay. I think that sounds. I think that's great. 
Last week we all met here, we met at 9.30 in the morning and we cleaned the building and we sorted everything out and then we had McDonald's breakfast together. That was good, wasn't it? Yeah. So, you know, spiritual warfare is not just pulling your spiritual sword out and fighting demons. It's not, it's not really, you know, the, the actual battle with demons, I believe, as Christians, is a very, very, very short battle where we simply stand, use the name of Jesus, and they, they're defeated and they leave. Mm -hmm. All of this stuff about big struggles and battles with demon spirits, I just don't think it's right. I don't see Jesus ever having that, or the disciples, mm -hmm. or the early church. We use the name of Jesus, those demons go. It's a simple model. You lead someone to Christ. They confess that God is, God is God, Jesus is God, that he is right, his word is the truth, I'm a sinner. I mean, that's quite complicated. It can be a lot simpler than that. It can be just someone saying, I'm sorry. And they accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. We cast all their demons out of them. We fill them with the Holy Spirit. They get the gift of tongues. We give them a Bible. And then we stop, have lunch together. And in the afternoon, we go out and do something else like that with other people. It's not complicated. It really isn't that complicated. Casting demons out of people gives everybody a fighting chance of making it as a Christian. And it can be a, fairly, a very basic and straightforward thing to do. So, where should we meet, Jackie? One o'clock. Meet at one o'clock at the... We meet at the at the gates at Alexander Road, and what's the junction of Alexander Road and uh, Claremont Road? Yeah, what I want to do is I want to I want to use I'm not sure we'll do this the first few times, but I want to have I've got a blow up not not a blow up a pop up gazebo. We'll have a few chairs. We're going to have a. An A-frame saying something like spiritual healing or whatever. And we're going to work in twos, inviting people for prayer, telling them that Jesus is the God who loves them and has the power to intervene in their life. And we're going to do it. We're not going to work all day. We'll, we'll do it for an hour, gather together, see how we feel, see how we got on. We'll work Alexander Park for a bit. If the people start getting fed up with us, then we'll go somewhere else after that. There is an occultic meeting in Alexander Park every weekend. You know about that well, and do you want to tell us what that is? What, what's that about? Is that all the hippies? Yeah, all the dancing. Yeah, so they can do it. <laughs> You know, and the, what what good news have they got? They're trying to what save the planet or something. I don't even, I don't know. We're we're going to save souls. Are we called to save souls? How much greater is that? God made this world by the word of His mouth, and man can't destroy it. It will be destroyed by the word of His mouth. But every every precious person who dies without Christ will go to hell for all eternity, and it's our job to. To do something contrary to all that the, the negativity and the darkness around us. Okay? okay. Pray about it. Yeah. Think about it. The devil is going to fight you. This is spiritual warfare. It's not fighting demons in the streets. Usually. It's the daily struggle to maintain a, a walk with the Lord. To pray. To be close to the Lord. To leave sin behind. We are being bombarded with, with opportunities to sin. And it's saying no to those things. That's spiritual warfare. It's saying, yes, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to, I'm going to seek the Lord until he gives me the gift of speaking in tongues. I'm going to do a daily Bible reading. I'm going to make sure that Tuesday evening at, at 7 a.m., 7 p.m., is the time that I'm going to spend with the people of God praying. Okay? 
timekeeping is really important. You know, when new people are coming into the church, that I want them to come in and see excellence. I want them to come in to see joyful people, not people who are depressed. I don't feel de I'm never depressed. I don't get depressed. I was many years ago. Now I'm not. I've been delivered from that. They come in, they see an enthusiastic people who are committed to Christ, for whom the Lord is making a great change in their life. People who come on time are people who are ready, are people who are reaching out to them. Okay. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would fall upon each one of us afresh right now. I pray that you would show us how to rearrange our life, that we can prioritize meeting with you, meeting with your people. Show us the, the work that you have for each one of us to do. Whether it be witnessing to our friends and family and in the workplace. If work allows and we can gather together at the 7 a.m. prayer meetings and a Tuesday prayer meeting and church on a Sunday. And other meetings that need to start happening. Other gatherings that need to happen. You know, sometimes a gathering is simply going to visit somebody during the week and having a coffee with them. It's not just my job to do that. It's our jobs to do that. To look after each other. To make that phone call. I see pastoral gifting sitting on people. But they need to develop it. They need to come forward and they need to do it. And the enemy is going to just bring so many distractions. Help us, Lord. Show us what the enemy is doing. There is a good that is not God. Show us, Lord, the good things that come to us to occupy our time, our money, which are not from you. They're not things that we're called to do. Show us, Lord, the tasks and the work you have for us to do. Help us, Lord, that we capture the vision that it's our kingdom. We're going to inherit it. Amen. You are the king and we're going to be under you in that kingdom, Lord. It's, it's so amazing. May we put aside all the things that weigh us down. We have prayer requests, Lord. We need healings. We need people in our families to come to know you. But Lord, may we always make the main thing you in our lives. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would come in in a new way into our church and into our lives. And that we would be praying in tongues this week. That we would prepare for Saturday. As we go out, we give leaflets out. We share the love of Christ. We try to engage people in conversations. We offer to pray for them. I pray, Lord, that you would bring those people into the park next week. Who need you. Who are looking for you. Guide us to them. I pray for that man, Lord, that I spoke to yesterday. and told him that, I loved, that you loved him. I ask that you bless him. That, that you indeed, Lord, would find a way to come into his life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God. So the reason we can meet together today, the reason that we are going to heaven, the reason our sins have been forgiven, was because of what Christ achieved on the cross. There is no other reason. It's not because we're clever or we're good. It's not because of our nationality or anything else. It's only because of the goodness of God that he chose to come and offer himself as a sacrifice for us. That he died, that we may have our sins forgiven, that we may have our sicknesses healed. And we're going to remember now, we're going to share in the bread and the wine together. Let's not get too religious about this. You know, if you are in a bad place, if, you, if, you've, if you've got active sin in your life, don't take it. Or just say sorry to God and turn away from that now and receive. 